Hello, everyone. Uh, so I think the Ruby Kaigi is one of the most amazing programmer conference. And we will show the fun of Ruby Kaigi and the power of Ruby Kaigi. Yeah. We will talk about hijacking Ruby syntax in Ruby. <coughs> OK. Uh, at first, I introduce myself. Uh, my name is Tomohiro Hashidate. And come from Japan. Uh, but uh, my friends call me Joker or Joker san. Uh, because my Twitter ID and um, GitHub ID is Joker1007. And um, please, mem please remember me, Joker. <laughs> and I'm working on deploying as CTO. Uh, I'm usually working. Uh, I'm usually work as data engineer, data engineer, infra engineer, web application engineer, etc. And because, uh, because of it, I'm familiar with Ruby and Ruby on Rails and Fluently and Amazon issues, um, Facebook, um, Prest, or etc. Yeah. So this Ruby camp is my first Ruby camp experience. And it's my first trip to the United States. And this talk. Uh, <laughs> This talk is my first speech abroad, and of course, this talk is my first English speech. And because of it, I'm so nervous now. <laughs> but, but I'm very happy to talk at Rubicon. It's my great pleasure. And next is introduction of um, talking partner, uh, Morris-san. Um, hello, everyone again. And I am Satoshi Tagomori, and also known as Tagomoris. But then, and many uh, Ruby friends call me as just Morris, so they please call me Morris. And then I am an, an open source software developer and also an or managers, uh, sorry, and maintainer of some uh, projects, including FluentB, Messageback Ruby, and Norikra, Wusi, and some others, uh, many others. And I'm uh, I'm working at a processor company, ARM, right now, as a um, software developer in an um, IoT service division. Uh, to providing um, enterprise data uh, analytics platform. Uh, so we, we both, and I and uh, Joka-san, are working uh, in different companies. And, but why we are uh, talking together here is a Saxa RB. A Saxa RB is a um, very great uh, regional uh, Ruby community in Tokyo. And uh, we, we are always to, uh, talking together about um, interesting programming techniques and uh, writing and many interesting code, including meta programming. So, and this talk, uh, in this talk, and we will introduce and some uh, Ruby features, uh, Ruby standard features, and then uh, we will talk about the, our own code, uh, which uses uh, these uh, meta programming techniques. First, I will talk about binding. So binding is a kind of context uh, object which includes a set of uh, local variables and instance variables and many as some others. And in many cases, uh, uh, binding is uh, used for uh, template engines, and kind of. And uh, so this uh, sample code shows that, uh, uh, this sample code shows uh, how to get binding, binding object from um, as from context of uh, method get binding, and then uh, get the value of variables, like a local variable n or instance variable secret using local variable get method. And the binding, binding of a class having some other methods, like a receiver, eval, local variables, local variable get, local variable defined, and local variable set. So this code shows uh, what we can do uh, using binding. Um, in this code, uh, uh, this code gets a binding object from binding proxy methods with variable A, B, and C, and, and also dumps the, uh, the contents of binding, binding object. And also, uh, this uh, code is doing a local variable get method uh, to get an, uh, the value of variables uh, A, B, and C, and dump them. And, and this uh, result shows that the, the object, uh, sorry, the binding object 
uh, uh, sorry, binding object is recreated per binding call. So that means um, if we do a local variable set on our binding object and, and acquired from different context, and we can see uh, the create uh, the newly created local variable D just after local variable set, but in original context, uh, the local variable D disappeared. So that, that means uh, we cannot create a new local variable on different context. But interestingly, uh, this code is doing local variable set on both of local variable D and A with value integer 20. So the result, the result shows that, and we can see uh, both of local variable D and A with integer 20, and also in original context, we can see uh, local variable A with integer 20. This means uh, binding local variable set method is to add a, a variable only in a binding instance or to overwrite values of existing different uh, in existing variables in original context. We can do that. And next is a trace point. And trace point, uh, so the sample code shows that in trace point, uh, trace point usage, and the trace point is to trace uh, events in Ruby virtual machine and call uh, the hooks and about these events. And we can hook in many events, like on the line, layers, and then class and the end for the beginning of uh, class definition and uh, the, the end of class definition, and call and return about to hook the method calls, uh, Ruby method calls, and C call and C return about the uh, methods implemented in C language, and the B call and B return for blocks, and thread begins thread end and fiber switch. And Ruby document says that and we can use trace point to gather information specifically for exceptions. But I, of course, and we can uh, use and many various events. So that's, and I think that that document is and completely wrong. And uh, anyway, <laughs> so look at this code. And this code is very simple and a method definition to define A with argument A and a dump uh, that the, the content of local variable A, and then return as string, yay, in global uh, cases. And, the, and then uh, call the EA method with uh, integer 100, and then dumps the result of that method. So result is, uh, surprisingly, uh, local bar the, the value of local variable A is string 100, and uh, the returned value is upcased yay. What happens? In fact, um, above, at the, above of the code, I defined, uh, uh, I, I enabled a trace point to set a local variable with a stringified value and uh, to call upcase method on returned value. So this is what trace point can do. So the trace point having many methods to control its behaviors or uh, to know the details of events, what, what is the event or where the event occurs. And, uh, and we have some methods, uh, some methods to know the details of events, like a method ID or a curly ID or a less exception or return value. And trace point also have a method binding. That means we can get binding object at any point we can hook using, use, uh, using uh, trace point. So that means we can use trace point to gather information about Ruby virtual machine, or we can overwrite every local variables at the any time in Ruby code. <laughs> so you should not require my code because I can break any kind of Ruby code, your Ruby application, your Ruby library, anytime, completely. Yes, I can, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Anyway, uh, I will talk about two moving features. Uh, first, it's refinements. Uh, refinements provide a way to extend the class locally. It's useful to monkey patch safety. Um, this code is, uh, uh, this is a sample of monkey, uh, safety monkey patch. Um, but I'm sad because most Ruby programmers don't use this feature. Uh, in fact, refinement is difficult and limited feature. And uh, I had some Ruby committers said, um, I actually want to remove this feature <laughs> or not. Um, I'm so sad. Refinement is pretty cool. Um, I like this feature. And there is another use case. It's super private method. Uh, these defined method uh, used in only this file, absolutely. Uh, it's useful for refactoring, uh, for example, method extraction. And second, I want to talk about method hooks. Uh, anybody know method hooks? Uh, if, if you have used it before, um, please raise up your hand. Uh, so, uh, thank you. And uh, so, I, I, I think that it is not popular feature. And um, these hook methods are uh, called when a method is defined or removed or undefined. <coughs> uh, for example, <coughs> this sample code shows how method update we have. Uh, method update is called from the line of the foo. Um, in this case, in line number seven. Um, and receives the defined method name as symbol. <coughs> so, uh, method hook provides a way to implement method modifier, uh, like public, private, protected. <coughs> By the way, I made three method modifiers. First, final modifier, a final forbid method override. Second, override modifier. Override enforces the target method has super method. Third, abstract modifier. Uh, abstract enforces that target method is overridden. Um, this modifier is similar with ones of Java. Um, if you uh, if you know Java, um, uh, please imagine the, uh, please imagine these modifiers, and you can understand easily. And these method modifiers work when Ruby defines class. And it is runtime, but in most cases, these checking run before main application logic. In other words, and there is no overhead. Here is a sample code of final stream. <coughs> final stream provides a uh, final modifier. Um, when a method is defined, or when the class includes a module or extend a module, if superclass has final method and the method and the method is overrided, exception is occurred. <coughs> like this. <coughs> and this is a sample of overrider gem. Now, when class definition is finished, if modified method has no super method, exception is occurred. And this is a sample of abstract gem. When the class definition is finished, if modified method is not overridden, exception is occurred. <coughs> um, how to implement these method modifiers? Uh, so I used so many hook methods. And uh, included extended method added and trace points. And also I used Ripper. <coughs> in other words, I used the power of many black magics in Ruby. <coughs> and here is a uh, use case of method added in finalists. <coughs> um, so method added triggers uh, main method verification logic. <coughs> Method hook is useful for implementing method modifiers, <coughs> but <coughs> I, cannot uh, I cannot implement final modifier only by method hook. Why? 
Ruby has so many cases of method definition. Um, def or define method, include module, extend prepend. <coughs> so, each case called dedicated hooks. Why? <coughs> because include changes only, only chain of method lookup. When Ruby program includes a module, <coughs> Ruby interpreter inserts module to a hierarchy of method lookup. <coughs> it's different from method adding. It's important. Um, for your information, uh, class ancestors method displays um, class and module hierarchy. <coughs> for this reason, finalist gem uses many hooks in order to cover various cases. Um, method added to detect uh, overrided by subclass, singleton method added to detect overrided subclass, singl uh, singleton class, and include it and extend it like so. <coughs> and uh, I want to talk about stress point two. Overrider gem and abstriker gem use stress point. <coughs> in this gem, Inherited hook or included hook starts stress point tracing. <coughs> In stress point hook, I check class module hierarchy to detect method existence. <coughs> so, um, module instance method, the method is very useful for such a situation uh, because method class has super method method. Uh, super method method provides a way to trace method lookup chain. Mm, mm. I'm using the word method too many times, then maybe you are confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I use trace point? <coughs> Ruby defines method dynamically. Uh, it's determined at runtime. Because of it, I must wait until the end of class definition to know what method is present or not. Override and abstract cannot detect violation just when they are called. In Ruby, the only way to detect the violation, detect such violation, is trace point. <coughs> and I have advanced use case of trace point in abstract gem and override gem. These gems must detect finish of specific class definition in trace point hook. Uh, in such situation, uh, there is one point that needs attention. Uh, Ruby has two syntax to define class. Uh, class end statement and class.new with code block. Class.new with block is uh, just method code. It's important. <coughs> In other words, um, end event of trace point cannot detect um, class dot new with code block. Because of this, I used to see return event and return value property. It may cause trouble. <coughs> I, I was in heavy trouble. <coughs> and I have another advanced case. Uh, it's stress point and Ripper combination. Uh, do you know Ripper? Uh, Ripper is a built-in library, but not popular. So standard library. And Ripper is a parser for Ruby code, and it can output token list and uh, S expression. Uh, S expression represents a construction of Ruby code. It has token, token swings and uh, token positions. It is similar to AST. Um, by the way, as a future option, uh, we can use Ruby VM colon colon abstract syntax tree module. Uh, it's already added in current Ruby trunk. Uh, it has a better interface than Ripper. Um, it's great work. Uh, sample code of Ripper is this. Uh, this code, from, this code is from Ruby reference manual. <laughs> um, there is a token position in nested array. Uh, right over at ident and uh, m string m, and 
So that nested array is token position. <coughs> this is the use case of abstract gene. Uh, I'm sorry, this sample is very complicated, and, uh, and please see details after we upload this deck. Uh, events of trace point has file pass and line number. And the S expression that is out uh, is S expression that is output by Ripper has token position. <coughs> I can detect construction of code syntax easily by this information. In abstract gem, I check a construction of Ruby code to detect whether some method modifier is called in class definition or out of class definition. <coughs> like this, um, Ripper empowers stress point. Uh, stress point detects events and where it occurs, and Ripper.sexp method provides how methods are called. <coughs> and we can get detailed information about invoking method by this information. <coughs> and as a one of other use cases, PowerSat gem is implemented by this combination. Uh, PowerSat gem is built-in gem uh, for testing. <coughs> um, anyway, these gems are proof of concept, but these are decent practical. I think I think that black magic is dangerous, actually, but it is very fun and it extends Ruby potential. So uh, we can change Ruby syntax by Ruby code itself. Because of these features, I like Ruby very much. Uh, here is break, break time slide. Uh, I have uh, we have. One question, uh, Ruby quiz. Um, what is the difference between undef method and remove method? Uh, I, I pass the mic to Morris um, during the thinking time. <laughs> okay, um, did you get answer? <laughs> so when we call the uh, the instance method who, uh, the Ruby Ruby virtual machine. Uh, and such is the uh, Ruby machine machine digs um, the method lookup chain and find uh, we find uh, the definition of method who at the class bar. Uh, the class bar is uh, the subclass of uh, the superclass who, and also uh, and also who has who also has a uh, definition of method who. But um, and anyway, uh, the method who in class bar will be called when we call uh, when we call the remove method method. On the class bar, it just removes the definition of uh, the method who and from class bar. So then, and when we call the uh, the method instance method who, as uh, the method lookup chain, uh, the Ruby Ruby virtual machine will dig the method lookup chain to and and then find we we'll find the uh, method uh, method definition who from uh, class who. But on the other hand, and we when we do the undef method who. On class bar, that method masks the definition of method who on class bar and marks that method do not exist. So then, and when we call the instance method who on class bar, um, that as uh, the Ruby virtual machine raises no method error. So when you want to raise no method error, uh, you should use the undef method. Anyway. So this is an, an my um, uh, the use case of uh, these meta programming techniques, and so when we will write uh, middlewares or uh, a huge applications, and we need uh, we need uh, we will do the many uh, times of resource allocations and re uh, resource releases, and uh, resource means. Uh, huge memories or files, file handlers and sockets, database connections, and many others. So we need to release these resources uh, when we will not use uh, this resource anymore. But then, 
And of course, we can use and begin and uh, ensure clauses for that method, uh, for that uh, purpose. And, but um, that is a, a bit complex and messy. And, uh, and the other languages have um, special idioms for that purposes. For example, uh, the, this, um, uh, so Java, so Java code, Java code shows that uh, uh, try with resources crowds and for that purpose, only for that purpose. But then that is very simple and useful uh, to, uh, to, to allocate resources and then uh, release these resources safely, in safe way. So, of course, Ruby have a um, way to handle these uh, problems. That is an, an open method with blocks. The open, uh, the, file, the open method of file, file class uh, take an uh, argument of pass, and then uh, the bro in, in block, uh, the, the file will be opened, and then at the end of block, uh, the file, file, file will be closed. And, but then that is a kind of Ruby way, I think, but then it requires many indentations, one indentation per resource, and then sometimes that method is not implemented. And for example, TCP method, uh, TCP socket do not have uh, this, type of mes this type of method. So that I, I wrote a uh, RubyGem uh, with resources. And this, resor uh, this RubyGem is to, uh, to realize uh, this safe resource allocation and using uh, top level with method by kind of refinement. And uh, so this, uh, this with method uh, takes an just one argument and of proc object to assign resources. And then uh, it passes assigned, resource, assigned resources to uh, the block parameter. So interesting thing is uh, this argument block uh, have uh, two statements. Of course, it, uh, uh, it, ha it can have an, um, any lines of uh, any number of statements. But an, uh, that's that's proc object having two statement and just returns one value, but it can uh, catch the allocated resources and stock and DB, and then and pass these values to uh, block parameters. So that is of course and trace point. Uh, it it uses a trace point and. Uh, events be returned and line, and to pass allocated resources to, bro to block parameters and identify and to identify allocated resources in in, in lambda uh, statement, and also it also uses uh, uses binding to detect newly defined local variables in allocation lambda, and then uh, it also it also uses refinement to introduce top level with method without any side effects. But um, um, this um, idiom uh, still requires uh, indentation for block. So that then when we need, we, we want to uh, assign uh, resources in March step, and uh, second, uh, first time, second time, third time, and it, uh, sorry, and if we call uh, with uh, methods three times, uh, it requires uh, uh, three level uh, nesting, so it is not so bad, but um, um, looks um, a bit messy. So that um, uh, we want an, any much cool more, uh, alternative, and uh, Golang have a uh, defer. Defer do not require an um, indentations, and also uh, deferred uh, method call will be called at the end of context. That looks very smart. So yes, <laughs> I created that. Uh, 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 sorry. Uh, the, uh, the, so we have some option to implement defer, and an, an op op option is uh, to use uh, defer class, the kind of that, and uh, also and takes it. It's also taken and um, block, and then uh, in in that block we can use uh, deferred uh, processing, but then. It also, uh, it still uh, requires uh, uh, indentation, and uh, 
it um, and and the and the after calling and uh, defer method, we can replace the the value of variables, which uses in blocks, and uh, it uh, raises an unexpected ex exceptions or um, resource leakage. So that that is not safe. So I created defer our gem, and of course using our uh, refinements and to introduce a top level defer method. And so the sample code is, uh, is that, and uh, that is uh, just look like um, very similar to the defer in Golang, I think. Of course, I use um, trace point. <laughs> so, so defer method enables trace point, if not yet, and uh, it initializes internal stack frames. So uh, defer, uh, manage, defer uh, manages when the resources should be released using its own internal stack frame and the trace point and monitors the method call stack and get the snapshot and, and it gets the snapshot of local variables in defer block and, and co it calls release block at the end of scope. Scope and scope means that's virtual, uh, virtual stack frame. And it also uses a binding to store and restore a local bar the set of local variables in of a release block. And also it also uses uh, refinements to introduce top level defer method without any side effects. Um, that is an, uh, sorry. <laughs> and uh, so these techniques uh, are very powerful and we can do many things using these techniques but um, the hard thing is <laughs> debugging. <laughs> if we missed to disable a trace point works at the, at the expected time, uh, the trace point will continue, uh, in, will continue to work um, forever. <laughs> and and the, the only way to stop it is to kill, uh, to send a kill signal to the Ruby proce uh, process. <laughs> that is a very hard thing. <laughs> but, then, but also, it uh, provides us um, kind of superpower to us and to realize many good things, many interesting things. So that's um, a gentleman said long, long ago, far, far away, give yourself to the dark side. It is the only way you can save your friends. Thank you very much.